Introduction The saxophone's an instrument of variety. It's been used to cover all sorts of parts, ranging from arrangements of classical symphonies to common use in modern jazz and rock groups. This versatile instrument is one that many would consider vital to the modern musical group. This guide will give you the basic knowledge, skills, and background necessary to perform and use this magnificent instrument. The first saxophone was invented by Adolf Sax, a Belgian instrument maker in the 17th century. Adolf designed the saxophone as an attempt to combine the ease of use of a woodwind with the strong sound of a brass instrument. The reason woodwinds are considered easy is because they use multiple keys to hit many notes, while brass instruments have very few keys, if any. These keys allow performers to play any sort of passage at the rate their fingers can move, versus brass players who can only perform certain types of passages and have to do everything with their mouth, which is more difficult and restricting. He acquired a 15-year patent on the design on June 28, 1846, making it one of the newest instruments designed. After the patent expired, many saxophonists and instrument manufacturers began changing the design of the original instrument, eventually forming the keyword that exists for all saxophones today, and narrowing down the number of commonly used saxophone designs to four, soprano saxophone, alto saxophone, tenor saxophone, and baritone saxophone. There are other types that still exist and are in use today, but these are the most common four, and they'll be the saxophones addressed in this guide. Saxophone Basics All saxophones are written in the same range, varying only in different keys that different brands or models may have that allow one to hit notes just outside the standard range. The difference between the instruments is what key they're in. Saxophones are not concert pitch instruments, meaning that the note names written are not the same technical pitch like on a piano, as what sound is coming from the instrument. Alto and baritone saxophones are in E-flat, while soprano and tenor saxophones are in B-flat. This is important to note when playing in groups, unless you're given a piece of music in the key of your instrument, you have to transpose in order to play the actual notes that are asked for. This is explained on page 95. Other than this concept, the saxophones function the same way with one difference being that the individual must have their embouchure, the way their mouth is positioned, set slightly different. Also, the amount of breath support required for each saxophone differs. The easiest saxophones to learn embouchure and breath support on are the alto and tenor, and the hardest are the soprano and baritone. For beginners, choose an alto or tenor saxophone to learn how everything works. A majority of solo and saxophone learning material is written for the alto saxophone, as it's the most common beginning and solo saxophone. However, a tenor saxophone would also work. The saxophone's a complicated instrument and relies on many systems to function. Sound is created when a reed, shown in the next section, vibrates on one end of the mouthpiece as air moves past it. This air goes through the rest of the saxophone, exiting the bell of the instrument, giving sound to the note that's fingered. Throughout the body of the instrument, there's many holes and pads, each of which can change the tone. The pads are there to create and maintain a seal of a particular hole in the saxophone, causing a change in tone. Generally speaking, the more holes that are covered in the saxophone, the lower the note is, and vice versa. Some of these pads cover holes by default, while some do not, and this allows the saxophone player to hit keys that will raise the pads, thus raising the pitch of the instrument. Due to the nature of the instrument, the sound projects directly from the bell outward. The saxophone is a direction-oriented instrument, meaning that in order to project properly, the instrument's bell must be pointed in the general direction you're playing. Knowing these basic premises, let's open the case and get started assembling and playing the saxophone.
assembling your saxophone. In your saxophone case, you should have these items. Read, pictured above. This is a small tan slab that looks similar to wood, which is usually and should be contained in some form of plastic case. Recommended starting read strength for beginners is a Rico, as these are easy reads to produce sound from and are made for beginners. Any read of a 2 or soft rating can be used as they are all designed for first-time users. Double-check the manufacturer's strength ratings as they're not all the same. Ask the music store owner for advice if you're unsure between brands and ratings. These are purchased separate from the saxophone, but they're very necessary. Always carry extra reads in your case so that you have a backup if the read you're using breaks. Mouthpiece, pictured above. This black, gray, metallic, or other colored piece is the smallest tube or cone-like piece in the saxophone. No thicker than an inch and a half and no longer than five inches. Both of these are overestimates. Most likely your mouthpiece will be much smaller depending on which type of saxophone you're using. It has a circular hole in one end and is slanted at the other. The slanted end has an opening on the flat side of the slant. This piece usually comes with the saxophone. If not, you may purchase one, and as you become a better player, higher-end models can be purchased separately for specific purposes. For beginners, though, the mouthpiece that comes with the saxophone should be more than sufficient as well as any standard mouthpiece. Ligature, pictured above. This is a metal plastic or leather band with one or two screws in it and is usually left in the case wrapped around the mouthpiece. Make sure the screws are not tightened as far as they can go and that there's no breaks in the material. These can also be purchased separately if yours does not fit or breaks. Neck strap, pictured above. This strap with or without a pad on it can simply be a piece of cloth with string attached to it and a hook on one end. They come in a variety of colors, designs, and pads, so purchase one that feels the most comfortable for you. As long as there's a clip or a hook and a part that goes against your neck, it will work. Neck piece, pictured above. This piece can be curved, but this is not always the case. It's the same color as the saxophone, and it has one metal end and one cork-covered end. It should be in its own fitted spot in the case, and it's part of the saxophone you purchased. If you don't have one or yours is damaged, you'll have to take it to a professional and most likely have to special order a new one. Saxophone body, pictured above. This piece is the most recognizable piece because it contains all the essential keys and pads. Make sure that all of the holes have a pad above them or covering them, except of course for the large opening at the end of the horn known as the bell. If not, check to see if any pieces may have broken off in the saxophone case and take it to a professional to get mended. Now that you have all of the necessary pieces, you may assemble your saxophone. For pictures and demonstrations, the alto and tenor saxophones will be displayed as examples. However, all standard saxophones assemble and function in the same way. Therefore, the instructions are the same for all types. Assemble your saxophone. First, moisten your reed by either putting it in your mouth or soaking it in water. While you're moistening the reed, you can assemble the rest of the instrument. Second, Place the neck strap over your head, then clasp the hook clip into the ring on the saxophone body, pictured below. This distributes the weight of the saxophone to your neck and shoulders so that the arms don't have to do all the work of holding up the instrument. Third, insert the metal end of the neck into the smaller opening of the body, pictured below. When holding the body, always hold it by the bell where there's not keys or pads so that you don't risk breaking any keys or pads or other piece. The neck should slide into the body relatively easy. If it does not slide in easily, make sure the neck screw is unscrewed by turning it a few times counterclockwise. Don't unscrew the neck screw entirely, only a few turns until it's loose. Try inserting the neck again. 
Some saxophone necks are a tight fit and may require some twisting to slip in, but do not force it. If it does not fit, take it to a professional for their opinion. Don't apply any form of chemical or grease to the metal without first consulting a professional. Once you've gotten the neck piece into the saxophone all the way, tighten the next group by turning it clockwise, pictured below. Once it's tight, you don't need to turn it any farther. At this point, you risk breaking the screw and having to pay a repairman to drill it out and put in a new one. Fourth, once you've moistened your reed, you may place it onto the mouthpiece with the flat side of the reed against the flat opening. Align the bend of the reed with the bend of the mouthpiece, placing the reed so that there's a slight outline from the mouthpiece and it's uniform, pictured below. If it's not quite in the correct position, you'll realize it after trying to play and then you can adjust it further. Fifth, once you've put the reed where you want it, slide the ligature on the mouthpiece and the reed so that the head, turning end, of the screws is on the right side of the mouthpiece. Tighten the screws until taut, making sure not to accidentally jar the reed from its place, pictured below. Once the screws are tight, do not turn them in any farther. If you do, you may break a screw or crack the reed. Sixth, slide the mouthpiece with reed and ligature onto the cork end of the neck, pictured below. This should be relatively smooth and easy, and you should have space to push it farther in or pull it out. This flexibility will be necessary later. If your mouthpiece has extreme difficulty sliding on the cork, as many instruments do during their first use, you may apply some cork grease to the cork. Cork grease commonly comes in your case when you purchase the instrument. You can also purchase it separately. This should fix the stiffness problem for a long time to come. Cork grease should only be applied once every few months. Now your saxophone's assembled. Next, you must warm up and tune the instrument before beginning to play your piece of music. Note, fingerings and note playing can be found on page 14. When you're first learning to play, Skip warming up and tuning until you've practiced the fingerings and have learned how to play notes. Copyright howexpert.com